Hello and welcome everybody to this edition of the Coach Vogelize Corner. I'm David Stearns. Joined on the phone with me is Coach Aaron Vogelai. Coach, how are you after uh, the uh, couple of weeks off there? Granted, the uh, hurricane knocking out two games this past weekend. I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? Doing all right, doing all right. A little disappointed we couldn't call any action for you last weekend in the game that was supposed to be against uh, Delaware. But uh, let's go back a week prior to that and talk about the games against Maryland. You split the weekend against Maryland, and uh, quite a momentous occasion for the Maryland Terps since uh, it's been, what, eight years since the last time they took down UMBC? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, 15 contests, so I had stretched over about 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm sorry, eight years. Eight years, okay, all right, eight, all right. 15 contests, eight years, my, my, my apologies. <laughs> there you go. So what happened in that first game? Uh, it, it seemed very uncharacteristic in a, in a very tight contest as opposed to the second game. You know, I think, you know, we, we, we've, we've been struggling for the last couple of weeks just kind of finding the identity of our team and, struggling with some big losses up against some of the bigger teams in the in the country. I think we were still living off the identity that they were UMBC and we've gone to nationals the last three years. You're just going to kind of move out of our way. Uh, somebody forgot to tell Maryland and some of these other teams because they we, we, they, they play like we've got a target on our back and we just aren't, aren't playing up to speed. So, you know, Maryland took it to us and we were up 2 nothing after one. Um, it was 3-2 us after two. Uh, we had some internal team issues that, that went on kind of during that game, and I don't think our team ever really survived because they Maryland took us to us took it to us in the third period, and we had a bad turnover late in the game, and that was all she wrote in a 4-3 loss to set it to UMBC. Well, the uh, the real story then on that weekend was the pretty much comeback performance from your guys on Sunday against Maryland up in your barn. And, uh, of course, you guys take losses very hard in your own barn, and uh, this one was kind of a redeemer after that loss to Montclair State University. So why don't you take us through this game as it was a very different story. A 6-1 to one score is a very far cry, a very, you know, it is a far cry different from the previous score of 3-2. to two. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, after the, after the loss that we had to Maryland and that, that on Saturday, um, we had a we had a team only meeting. It was led mostly by our captains uh, until I kind of finished everything off. And I think the team just finally said enough is enough. You heard contributors from obviously our captains Nick Yost and Bloom uh, and Sean O'Connor, but you also had um, you also had contributors like like a Brandon Fritz had mm -hmm. a couple things to say, and you had uh, freshman Zach Tracy and freshman Alec Hannock all had things to say that were very positive and things that we can build off of. And I think finally they kind of came to the realization that if they don't play as a team, they're not going to go very far. Mm -hmm. They haven't earned anybody's respect. They haven't they haven't really done anything as a team yet other than going, you know, three and five, which is a far cry from, from where they probably should be with the mm -hmm. talent that they have on their roster. But, you know, they, they it, it just wasn't working for them, so... You know, they had a team only, a players only meeting before the game on Sunday at our barn. Um, I, I had a meeting with the captains, and I had basically said, "You guys, I'm done talking. You know, I want to, I want to hear your answer and what, whatever you guys want to, uh, whatever you guys want to bring to the table. You bring it on the ice. So that's where we're going to do our talking from now on. It's not going to be in a locker room. And you know, you could tell right from the get go that it was going to be a different type of hockey game, and that they wanted to prove that they could play my style and. What I and how I want them to play, and they did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just just in difference, just to, just to, as used as in, in comparison on Saturday night at Maryland, we gave up 16 shots in the first period. Um, that's way too many. Um, on Sunday in our barn, we gave up five in the first period. We we didn't give up a shot until there was nine minutes left in the first period. There you go. <laughs> oh, so it's. You know, I think I think they finally took a step in the right direction. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, a lot of it, you know, is, I mean, we had a great, we had a couple of great performances on Sunday, but as a whole, the team finally provided, and the team finally, you know, thirst in, in the in the development of what they have, how they really needed to play, and I think we're hopefully they they'll take the next couple of steps over the next couple of days. 
I should apologize. I had the wrong score. There was 4-3 in that previous contest. But uh, regardless, in that 6-1 to one win, talk a little bit about your special teams. Uh, you guys had three power play goals on your six goals on the hole in that game and uh, a shorthanded goal at that. So four goals coming in on special teams. Talk a little bit about the development of your special teams and how much of an impact they've had on your team. You know, I think we're, we're our power plays are starting to come. We, we, we've been working on them um, uh, um, a, li- a lot lately. Last year, I didn't think our power play was as good as it probably could have been. You know, with the talent we had, we had a Justin Stewart, we had Eric Becker, we had Yost, we had T- Taylor Morgan, you had Sean O'Connor, you had Matt Bloom, you had Dan Durante, and yet we didn't have a consistent power play. And with those kinds of names, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we've made some changes to our power play. We put a couple big guys in front and said, okay, move us. But, well, you guys are job. You know, we put Thomas Naringer, one of our leading goal scorers. <laughs> yeah. um, he, he is parked in front of that net, and he's told not to move. We've got to the younger Durante brother, which is much bigger than Daniel. We parked him in front of the power play on the other unit, and the two of them have done a great job picking up a couple of goals apiece and doing a great job screening the goaltenders, and pucks are starting to go in for us. So uh, we changed up a little bit on the system a little bit, so they're looking at different reads. We're... You know, we're really trying to kind of get down to the basics um, of what their reads are and how I want it to run and things like that. And the guys are listening. So um, the second power play unit, I almost can't even call them the second power play unit, is just the other power play unit from the one that's loaded with all the names that, that you would know. Um, but Colin Devlin, we put him on that power play, and he's done nothing but score two goals right on, right in his first game in the in at, at that position. So... You know, he, he, he for some reason it works. So well, talk, hopefully that hopefully that'll continue. We'll talk here about you know the shorthanded goal scorer Matt Bloom. Uh, he's a player that's kind of caught my eye here. He's the second tallest guy in your squad, and he definitely has speed considering his height. Uh, talk a little bit about his play and the impacts he's had on. Uh, in, in game situations such as the shorthanded goal. And, of course, uh, we had a memorable goal against, uh, I believe it was Virginia Tech that I remember uh, broadcasting. So talk a little bit about Bloom. You know, Bloomer, has, Bloomer came to us last year as a true freshman, and, um, you know, he did, he did nothing but lead, lead our team in goal scoring last year. He was, he, he's been a great delight to have. He's a leader on the ice and off the ice. Uh, I mean, his speed is it's fantastic. I mean, a lot of it's from his size, but the kid, the kid works hard. Um, you know, one of the things that we do is we do time suicides in practice, kind of like the 1980 Olympic team. And obviously, we don't do them at the same time, but well, just blow the year, whistle, Craig. You know, that's it. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, we, we, um, you know, he, he, he's a guy that can go three suicides under under 50 seconds. Wow. You no, know, so I mean, he, he can motor, and he's, you know, he's got a great shot on him. Um, you know, he, he, he's tied for the leading goals already this year. I know he scored 30 goals last year for us as a freshman, and mm-hmm. his goal is to get higher. But, I mean, he's he's an invaluable, he's a very, very valuable asset to us, and we're going to exploit him for everything he's worth over the next couple of years. He's been, he's, he's been doing a great job, and that's why he got elected one of the captains as a sophomore. Now, I'm going to ask you here, as I've seen your team progress over the last four years, uh, the names are changing on the roster, but then some, of course, have siblings that pop up out of nowhere. But um, across the board here, or there's even unrelated names that are same names, but um, just looking at the way your team's progressing through, you're dropping off players, uh, this roster seems vastly different from what I've seen in the beginning. How do you do it uh, as far as selling your system to these players? I mean, you have uh, each year you tell me about how your recruiting class is getting bigger and bigger and you have so many players that come out for tryouts and and for recruit skates that you don't know what to do with them. Um, When you do get your final roster together, I mean, at this point in the season, you're in a bit of a tough spot, but banding these guys together and trying to get them into that chemistry that you've instilled in this team when you first picked it up a few years back, uh, what what is it that you do? Uh, I mean, obviously you told us about that motivational speech of you're done talking and you let the guys figure it out. But aside from that, obviously, what is it that makes Coach Vogelai a success for UMBC uh, leading up to this season? Well, I think you need good. I think you need good leadership. Um, you know, I try to lead by example the best I can, but I think I put a lot of the onus on the captain. They put a lot of it on Nick Yost. They put a lot of it on Sean O'Connor. Daniel Durante and Matt and Matt Bloom, 
um, just like I put it on Dana Becker back when, back when 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 he was here, and then some of the other guys, um, you know, in that first year. Um, so you you've had you know putting on guys like PJ Carmack and even Harcherik and Post and Durkee the first couple of years. They they really um, you know they, they they really took to it only because of where they had been and they knew that you know follow following the lead. Of somebody that that could lead them in the right direction, I think was was enough for them. But you know, with this group of guys, I mean, it's part of it is you know the leadership and getting them and getting guys to follow them. I think I think that's definitely a key. Another part of it is our training camp that we run them through. We break them down to basically nothing, so we can build them all up. We build we break them down as individuals, so we can kind of build them up as a team. So um, that usually works. And then you come across usually a couple stumbles along the way. And usually it's, you know, they, they stumble because they're young and they want to do things their way or the way that they've done things on their, you know, on their previous teams. And it just, it never works. So you get them to try it and do it and do it your way. And when they do it, they realize it works and they usually never look back. So it's a bit of it's luck. I'm not going to lie, but a lot of it is, it's, it, it's structure. And if as soon as the team buys into it as, as a one group, uh, as a family, they're incredibly difficult to stop. So, well, speaking of difficult to sp- uh, stop, you have some important games coming up this weekend. But uh, let me ask you: this past weekend, we had uh, the games against Delaware and Montclair canceled. Uh, talk to us really briefly here on uh, what are the status of those two games, whether or not they will be rescheduled. I know Delaware is probably a pressing issue because it is a league game and needs to find a spot somewhere. But Montclair State, uh, do we have any idea? We don't on Montclair as of yet. I mean, the two coaching staffs are very good friends. Uh, the GMs are very good friends. So if, if there is a chance to be able to play Montclair, we're definitely going to do it. Uh, the boys want their revenge after a, after a loss in their own building. It's the first loss in a couple of years here. So, um, you know, they definitely want to make up for that. But, um, you know, it's all going to depend on how the two teams' schedules look and when when and if we can make it work. Uh, I mean, it's a five and a half hour difference between the schools. It's not like it's in Delaware where it's literally, I mean, they could come down on a Wednesday if we can make it work. So, um, you know, so it's going to take some planning. We're going to see if not, we'll, we'll make sure that we play them uh, twice, maybe even up in their barn twice next year, just to make up for it. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just an unfortunate thing with the hurricane, but you know, weather's going to happen, but Delaware has to be made up at the league game, so we're going to need those points, and we're going to need to make sure we're on their level playing field. So we'll get it done somehow. All right, well, looking ahead here at this weekend, uh, you have a couple of games, uh, important games at that. Uh, granted, you have um, uh, you have Towson and, uh, well, first off, St. Joe's, and then Towson. And then that following weekend is very important uh, on the other side. So let's talk about this weekend here. Uh, as far as your roster goes, let's talk health-wise. Is there any surprises that we have to look out for as far as your bench? Well, I think I think there's a couple. Um, you know, Freestad is still is still out with the, with the high ankle sprain. We don't expect mm-hmm. him back to December, if not January. We'll have to see how that progresses. Mm-hmm. You know, he's in physical therapy right now, so it's going well for, so far. Um, you know, we we the other big injury that we have that we've sustained is is unfortunately our goaltender John Drago um, out with an upper body injury, and you know it, 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 we don't even know how long he's going to be out yet. So you know it's we're still in evaluations and things like that. So we just want to wish him a happy and speedy recovery there. Um, what I will tell you is we do have you know as we take those two out of our lineup, we will be adding two more. Uh, Cody Selbert is going to be coming back to us after three weeks being out with a broken hand. Mm-hmm. So he's, he has been cleared, so he will be back in our lineup, and that will be a welcome back to our defensive core. He brings some good leadership, even though he's a freshman, and a lot of talent to go with it. So that will be that'll be great to get him back in the mix. Um, and then we're bringing back uh, a name from the past, actually from last year's national run. He got, he got to really show his talent, at, actually even at nationals, up against Arizona State when he took him to overtime. We're going to bring back Trevor Miller. Okay. All so, right. Yeah, we're really excited to have him back, and we're going to throw him right in the net on Saturday to get him back in shape. Okay. That that does kind of surprise us all. 
But, uh, wow, all right, so Trevor Miller coming back to strut his stuff, okay. So, any concerns, though, with the games ahead against St. Joe's and uh, Towson? I know that the uh, the weekend after that, obviously, uh, up against Liberty and Rowan is pretty much the looking forward uh, importance uh, weekend, but uh, with rankings just coming up here on the other side, uh, what does this weekend mean for you guys? I mean, obviously, only one of them means something as far as league or conference players, or, you know, as you'll call it here. Um, but as far as the Towson game, Towson has been a bit of a, a mystery to me over the last four years uh, since I've been down in this area watching them on and off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is an important weekend. It might not be for ranking wise of things. We got to make sure we pick up, you know, two victories. I mean, we can't. We definitely can't drop one of St. Joe's. Mm-hmm. Uh, Towson is a, you know, they're actually having a pretty good year um, on the D1 side this year. So, you know, a loss to them wouldn't absolutely murder us. But at the same point in time, we want to make sure that we pick up a W if we can. Um, I think the biggest thing that we're, as coaching staff and myself personally, are going to look for is to make sure that we take that next step. Mm-hmm. You know, we had we had a great game in our second game up against Maryland, and finally started to turn that corner. We took a nice step forward, but it's crucial that we take the next two steps, and when those next two steps are this weekend, so um, we're gonna find out, you know, what what we have in store. If we're gonna have a Jekyll and Hyde kind of season, or if we're actually gonna get down to consistency and what we've seen in the past couple of years. Um, and if that happens, you know, then I think we'll be ready for next weekend. Um, but. The big thing is Saturday night at 7:30 up against St. Joe's. We got to come ready to play. I mean, we're definitely going to be the more talented team on the on the ice. Um, St. Joe's is is improved from last year, so that that'll, that'll be good. But at the same point in time, they're going to come up trying to come hard. They they want to try to avenge an 11 nothing loss that, that we handed to them last year. So they're going to come out ready to play and things like that. We just got to make sure that we that we play our game and make sure that we do the right things no matter what the talent level may or may not be to get ready for Sunday and then moving forward, getting ready for next, for the following weekend. Now, you, you did mention here, well, first off, do you think in your mind that having last weekend off, do you think that that somehow slowed the momentum in which you guys gained in that victory against Maryland? Because time off like that, I've seen teams go from a four-game win streak to a week off and then a week back on and then completely crumble. Um, I'm not referencing any particular team, but uh, let's just say that's the example. Um, you know, I, I think it, I think that can definitely happen, and it definitely can hurt. But um, for some reason, I, I, I'm thinking that this is probably just going to that's just going to make our boys just that much more hungry. I mean, they're going to have a little bit of rust to get off of, so it's probably you know you don't want to say it's perfect that we're playing St. Joe's, but. It's you know it's nice that you know we're not jumping back in with with a Rowan or a William Patterson or you know even a Liberty. I mean they're all very good teams. So um, you know I think we're going to be able to have a period to kind of get our our bearings back. But I think it's going to come back pretty quickly. I know the guys had a good you know good excuse me good practice this week. So you know I, I know they're hungry to get back on the ice. So I think they'll be fine. Now, looking between the pipes, now that you have Drago out, um, you're going to have uh, Norndorf uh, back up Miller, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so if things go in the direction of uh, he looks, Miller looks really sharp on Saturday, will you consider maybe pulling him uh, you know, out of the contention for Sunday to get him ready for the following weekend against Liberty and Rowan? No, I think he's got to learn how to play two games right away. So my, my, my initial plan is to... Um, is to play is to play Miller both games. So I was expecting to have Miller for this entire year. Uh, you know, one thing led to another, and he wasn't able to start the season with us, unfortunately. But I mean, we built this schedule for him and Drago to share time throughout the year. So, you know, we're looking forward to having having Miller come back. I mean, you know, we're going to throw him into the into the den and into the wolves into the wolves. But uh, you know, it is what it is, and he's going to have to work his way through it. All right, real quickly before we close out, I mean, I was going to ask you about Rowan, but I'm going to save that for next week's talk because what a surprise team they've been this year. Uh, Coach John Caulfield is doing a great job with this organization, 9-0 and 0 right now. But uh, let's get away from that, and we'll talk about that next uh, episode here. But uh, rankings, where where do you think you guys uh, legitimately fit in there? I mean, obviously there is some mathematics and logic to it, but uh, – where where are you guys probably going to end up in your mind? Uh, probably middle of the road. Okay. Uh, my guess is probably 
you know, five, six, or seven. Okay. All right. So, and, and the obvious answer to who's going to be up at the top, I mean, we already identified that Miami had a strong, strong showing this year, along with Rowan. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to put my money on those two, but, uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see, as we say in the business, for the uh, rankings at the end of this week. No, absolutely. It'll give us something to talk about next week, too. Well, we look forward to it. And, Coach, good luck this weekend against St. Joe's in Towson up there in Reisterstown. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. All right. This is David Stearns for Coach Vogelai's Corner. Joining us, joining us next week to recap this weekend's games against St. Joe's in Towson and looking ahead at the games against Liberty and Rowan. So stay tuned for that. And... As always, don't stop believing.